So there are a couple different ways in which you can form a condition that's going to determine how many times or for how long your loop is going to run. So there are sort of three main types. There's count controlled and where you define a counter or a number outside of your loop that keeps track of how many times you want your loop to run. There's a sentinel value in which you say, okay, keep on looping until we reach a specific value or that we process a specific value. It's kind of like similar to if you have some kind of like exit statement, like there's a line that says, okay, stop, we're done. Then there's do while in which you define a Boolean or string number outside your loop that will kickstart the first run. Um, so this kind of loop, you know that you always want to run it at least once. And that's kind of how you initialize whatever Boolean string or number variable that you're using to track whether or not you should run a loop. Um, so the first time you run, your piece of code, that statement will always be true. You'll run it at least once. And then after that, it's kind of up to whatever your code is doing. So starting off with count controlled. Um, so this is kind of like that example that we had just gone through where you have a number of bottles of beverage on your wall that you're waiting to drink. And so we started off with over here by initializing a variable um, on the slide. It says num bottles, initializing that number of bottles to 99 because the song starts off with 99 bottles. And so we initialize that value with the starting value in which we're saying, okay, we're gonna start off with 99 bottles. And then within our while loop, we say, okay, we've drunk a bottle, we're good. We're gonna subtract one because we have one, few, one less bottle than we did previously. And this is where we update that count. So num bottles is keeping count of how many bottles we have and we are updating that count as we are going through the loop over and over again. We check to see if the condition is true. We say, okay, it's true. We're gonna do the actions associated with this loop. We do the actions associated with this loop. One of the actions is update the number of bottles you have. And so we update that count. And then we go back to the top automatically as part of this loop, check the condition is true again and keep on going. So this relies on num bottles keeping count of how many, um, of how many bottles we have at a given point in time and running the loop accordingly. Then we have the sentinel value and the sentinel value is in a situation where you have a value that can be used to mark the end or stop. So if you have like a bunch of numbers and you want to stop the loop after you read in a particular number, like in this case, um, negative one, um, it's kind of similar to saying like, okay, stop, um, the users type in stop. When they typed in number one, they say, okay, I want to stop repeating this over and over again. So it's kind of like that concept. It should be drastically different from all of their input, like a specific word or a specific number. Um, sorry, I'm going to mute that for a bit. Um, a specific number that you want to indicate stop my loop. So um, in this example over here, we're using a number or our condition is checking to see, hey, while the input is not negative one, um, we wanna keep looping over and over again. And so by saying that, if within our loop, as you can see, um, we're asking the user for input again so that we just keep on having them type in numbers. Um, if the user types in any other number, it's fine, but if they type in number one, as stated in the instructions, enter a num or number one to quit, if they enter in the number one, that means that they want us to stop looping. And so that's why within this condition, we can say, hey, while the user has not typed in negative one, keep on looping. Otherwise, if they type negative one, that's basically the same as saying, stop, we don't wanna keep on going anymore. We don't wanna keep repeating this stuff over and over again. So initialization is by getting the initial input of whatever the user types in the first time. Um, and then you update by asking the user again, and saying like, if you type in this very specific value, this very special value, that's the equivalent of saying, um, let's stop the loop. So that's kind of how you use the sentinel value. And then we get to the third type, which is a do while. So many programming languages um, have a special loop called a do while. Python doesn't strictly speaking have a do while loop. There's nothing that says, there's no syntax that types in do while like colon something 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 but we can mimic its behavior with a regular while loop so a lot of the times you use them kind of in basically the same way so um, it's kind of python just kind of simplifies it to just everything's a while loop um, so 
The thing about the do while loop, again, because you always make sure you're running this at least once, you always kind of define a variable that's going to be true the first time you run through your loop or define a variable that makes your condition true the first time you run your loop. So you start off by defining a variable, again, string, integer, boolean, whatever you please. Um, create this variable outside of your loop before you actually start your loop. Write the loop condition. Um, the first time your piece of code hits the loop, that statement should be true. So however you're using the variable, the statement should be true so that your loop always runs the first time you hit your loop. Um, and then as with all loops, there should be some action which affects that variable as part of the condition. So something like this for this example, we're using a string. Um, we're saying, okay, start this variable called name, which some kind of string started off with the value of unknown. The condition that we're checking for is while well, name is not Pikachu. And because unknown, U-N-K-N-O-W-N -N is not the same as P-I-K-A-C-H-U. This statement will always be true the first time you hit the while loop. So the first time you hit this code and you want to check for this condition, you're checking to see if unknown is not equal to Pikachu. And because unknown is not equal to Pikachu, um, you're going to get into this piece of code that says, I'm looking for Pikachu. Um, which Pokemon are you? And so that's kind of thing the while loop is the first time you check this condition it's true so this loop regardless will always run at least or this piece of code as part of the loop will always run at least once um, eventually you'll get out of this loop when the user types in some name of the pokemon which is pikachu um, there's only really one option um, which is basically once the user types in the name pikachu and you come back up to the top and check this condition, Pikachu not equal to Pikachu, that's false. So you will eventually get out and say, I found Pikachu. So, um, so you can also use an integer, which is kind of combining the do while concept with the sentinel concept. So in this case, we're saying like keep going is one and we're checking to see while keep going is not equal to zero. And because one is not equal to zero, you will always do this at least once. Um, but then again, within your loop, having a way that eventually the value will keep going will change. And so similar concept again with the Boolean value, you can start to see the pattern where every time you, regardless of whatever you're using as part of your condition, you say like, okay, I'm gonna start this variable off with some kind of value, um, which makes whatever statement or condition I'm checking over here true the first time I go into my loop. So this will always run once. So yeah, that's kind of it on three ways to create conditions for your while loop.